All right, so we're back, everyone, and um, just ignore that little that little thing up in the up, upper right corner there. That's just Steam streaming beta being a piece of crap. I don't know how to get rid of that. I I would not fare well in the cyberpunk universe of Shadowrun due to my limited computer skills. Let's just say that. All right. Okay, now, talk to this Bobby fellow. Okay, Bobby, yo guy, have we met? You look familiar. I meet a lot of people. No problem. Need some brain benders tonight? I got some of that Merc stuff. Freakers, taxi drivers, you know. Taxi drivers? Is that like Merc. a drug? Or... That's a... Also, he, look, he looks like a... He looks like a sort of like, like a like a Shia LaBeouf. I was gonna say like a sort of a sinister '30s newsman. Yeah, should say hey, Shia, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> hey, what's the scoop here, she? It's the newsy cap, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's the it is. Yeah, can I uh, trust you? I w nobody more trustworthy than old Bobby. Kubota wouldn't let me in the place if I wasn't legit. Let me see what you've got. Ah, uh, these are, nah, we don't. Winners don't use drugs. They're they're too cheap. Let me <laughs> see what see Mr. Johnson here. Okay, already I don't trust this guy. The man sizes you up as you approach. His carefully groomed hair and the shine on his shoes seem out of place for the barons. Hey, you looking for work? I got a little something, if you're up for it. It's a milk run. That is not a face that inspires trust, at least not in me. He looks like a... like a sleazy Hollywood director. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, you want to be a star, sweetheart? Eh, just sit down on this... Yeah, just sit down over here. I ain't gonna hurt you. Yeah, that was with boring. that, uh... With that name, Mr. Yeah, Johnson. He sounds porny already. Well, that... Well, in the Shadowrun universe, Mr. Johnson is sort of the the typical pseudonym used by someone hiring runners. So that's almost certainly not his name. It's like just, uh, it's like a underworld term in the Shadowrun universe. All right. In my experience, it's never a milk run. He grins, exposing a set of unnaturally white teeth. Don't worry, this one's as straightforward as they come. Okay, that means it's not. <laughs> the job's a simple extraction. The people I represent are interested in acquiring the talents of a scientist named Sada. Unfortunately, Mr. Sada is currently engaged with Renreku, which means he's engaged for life. That doesn't sit well with the people I represent. They see it as a subversion of the free market. Renreku is, a, is one of the biggest uh, mega corporations in the world. They're based out of Japan, do a lot of electronics. Um, they're one... Um, they they run the, the they run Reiku Arcology in Seattle, which is this giant almost like city unto itself in a building. As of this game when this game takes place in two thousand fifty three, I don't believe it's happened yet, but there is later a very unpleasant incident called the Renreku Arcology shutdown that goes badly for the residents. <laughs> okay. Alright, All right, so So you want me to kidnap him for you. He flashes his pearly whites again. Exactly. But it has to be now. Renreku is shipping Sada out of Seattle in the morning for some sort of overseas research project. Tonight he's being kept at a hidden research facility out here in the Barrens. Just a couple miles from here. I hear they've been bringing in unmarked shipments for weeks now, thinking that nobody notices. We don't care about any of that. We just want Sada, before he's out of our reach. The place should be lightly guarded, probably rent to cops. Get in, grab Sada, and get out. In exchange, I'm authorized to remit 9,000 nuyen in payment. It fixes you with a hard stare. I am not. However, authorized to negotiate. All right, this is a this is a side this is like a side qu jo job basically. This is purely optional, but in the spirit of you know, let's play in something, we'll show it. I'm gonna show it. So I'm in. Let's see the Nuyen. We pay on delivery, friend. That's how it always works. I'll send the lab's location to your PDA. Hire a team and head there right away. Locate Sada and deliver him to my employers. They'll have a car waiting outside the lab when you're done. Once Mr. Saad is on his way, meet me back here for payment. No, nope. all right. We have our job. 
We're, ki we're kidnappers now, Nick. I thought that's what we always were. <laughs> well, among other things. Uh, here's, you know, the old troll bouncer. You alright, Mr. Flandry? I'll live, Mr. Cluet. Thank you. I heard you made trouble with the Universal Brotherhood. Oh. Let's go with the bad word play. Stirred up a hornet's nest, you might say. People are starting to say there's some dark dreck going down in those chapter houses. Like they're taking advantage of the poor folk who go there looking for help. Gotta say, that makes my blood boil. I am the Prince of Darkness, after all. He just looks like the de I'm just saying, he just- he looks so much like Satan. He's just like the most stereotypical Satan imaginable. It's bad en- It's bad enough that the government labels half the population as probationary citizens. We don't need more people preying on the most defenseless members of society. I hate to bring race into it, but it's a fact that a good number of people who go to the Brotherhood for help are metas, like me. But what options do we have? Do you realize what it would take an act of- Do you, do you realize it would take an act of Congress to give me full citizenship? And they've yet to do it once. Wars are waged more easily than a, than a meta gets a SIN in this country. A, a, SIN is, is uh, may have mentioned it's a system identification number. It's sort of, for, it's like, uh, it, you, it's a, uh, like a, it's a government issued ID that you need for like a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff in day to day life. If you don't have one, it's, you have to kind of live off the grid. And if you don't have, and a lot of people don't have one. There's like this whole like, sort of like separate underclass of society. So it's no wonder we turn to people like the Brotherhood, who claim to listen to our woes and speak on our behalf. He catches himself, takes a breath, and visibly calms. Sorry, I just know some folks who went to the Brotherhood for those very reasons. I might have ended up there myself if Mrs. Kubota hadn't taken me in. Whatever's going on in there, I trust you to put an end to it, one way or another. This isn't just for Sam anymore. Go get him, sir. Hail Satan. Which is me. Hey, let's see- Ah! The, wor the world's least enthusiastic male stripper is still here. You remember our friend? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, I love this guy. The, the, the lady stripper, she, I mean, she, she seems a lot more into it, but he's just... D d d <laughs> I, I just, I just want to end my shift and go home. <laughs> there also appears to be, like, a giant troll in a Hawaiian shirt ogling him. That might be kind of uncomfortable. Uh, let's talk to Van Grass here. Ah, uh, hello, stranger. I'm busy right now. So I'm hoping you've got something that's worth my time. How about a list of every politician the Universal Brotherhood has bribed to date? I could certainly find someone interested in that information. I'll take some legwork to verify the veracity of such a list. How about 2,000? Okay, now you have etiquette, socialite. Brackhaven's not on the list. We both know how much he'd pay. Or etiquette. Okay, remember, the etiquettes are like... Knowing how to move in particular circles. Right. You know? And socialite is like, so if you have the socialite etiquette, then you know, I guess like you know the names of, you know, uh, po of you know, you know like which politicians might pay the most for it. Like, right. Etiquette. But we do have, we don't have that. We do have etiquette. Shadowrunner. This info is about to be worth a lot more in the next few days. And what? I'm supposed to take your word for it? He makes eye contact. Hesitates. Fine. I'll speculate. But only because I can find you if this doesn't pan out. 2,500. No more. All right. Let's see. So our next job is to uh kidnap uh, a dude. Yeah, k kidnap that Japanese guy. Let's head down to the uh our secret basement fort. For once, Dr. Castle's not utterly absorbed in her work. In fact, she seems to have set aside whatever she's doing to give you her full attention. Perhaps word is spread about what you've already faced and what is still to come. Glad to see you're all right, Flandry. I was afraid they'd be carting you back to me in pieces. I don't suppose it'd be do any good to just an early retirement. Or, at the very least, that you might delay whatever is coming long enough for you to get a decent night's sleep and a full meal. Never knew you cared, Doc. Who said I do? A good cash cow like you only comes around every so often. You're no good to me dead. Ouch. <laughs> oh, but who am I kidding? I know your type all too well. Words of caution have little worth. And words of prohibition only make you more eager to throw yourself into the fire. You're like children that way. So, fine. 
Do what you will. Just tell me what I can do to keep you alive that much longer. So, what have you heard, Doc? Well, let's review. In the past few days, I've lost one patient and nearly lost a second. I've also learned that a man claiming to be a fellow doctor was responsible for the first of those deaths. And now I hear that another supposed force for good has been committing heinous acts on innocent men and women. Quite frankly, it's almost enough to make a woman give up on the whole human race. But then I remember why I don't. I remember how many innocent lives Mrs. Kubota has saved by giving them place and purpose here at the Union. I remember seemingly useless wastes of flesh like Paco risking their lives to save the one they love. Poor Paco. <laughs> you know, as I recall, Paco has like a nine charisma score or something. You'd think she'd like him more. I think we both remember. We are like, why does, why does everybody hate this guy with a nine charisma? Yeah, you, you think there should be like beams of like celestial light just coming from his face. <laughs> What'd you say is the, the max for humans? Ten? I'm not sure off the top of my head. I can, I can actually check the screen if, you, if you're wondering. I, re I remember that some people are still willing to stand up against those who would seek to do harm to others. That's the real reason you won't hear me argue against your chosen course, course of action. Because I agree that it must be done. I hope, only hope that it can be done without any more innocents coming to harm. That's the world I'd love to live in, but it just ain't so. I can't guarantee that no chipheads will die. <laughs> Uh, I think that that might be my favorite moment of the Let's Play so far. Oh my god! <laughs> I I know, but do what you can and bring us one step closer. I like to wake up to a world short one less evil. Let's have a look at the cyberware. All right, now to currently we just have our data jack in our head. That's what we use to interface with our our drones. And we've got our, our enhanced legs cyber techno as technology cyber leg which adds plus eight hit points and plus one to quickness. Let's, let's see if there's any other body parts we don't really need. Activate, act, well, actually, let me think. So it's just, yes, yeah, we've only replaced the left leg, huh? I, I don't think that's it. I think it's just like you've got, like, you've got two slots worth of stuff you can cram into your legs. I don't think they actually just replaced the left leg. Yeah. That wouldn't really make much sense. Be pretty funny. It would be funny, yeah. You've got like one superhumanly fast and powerful leg, but the other one is just completely normal. So like one leg is just dragging you along everywhere. <laughs> it would be faster to just hop everywhere than to <laughs> walk. Well, actually, we're going to go on this run. We're going to need. I need to save some money. Hang on to some money so we can hire runners. Ah, good old good old Algernon, the elf wizard guy. I love this dude. The magic dealer's area is abuzz with chaotic activity as you watch the contents of a dozen boxes fly through the air. The articles land on Algernon's table in some elaborate sorting scheme, while the man himself casually sits reading a magazine from the previous century. Welcome, Flandry. Is there anything I might provide to make your life easier? Or perhaps to make another's more difficult? Okay, now he's our go-to guy for magical knowledge, so maybe those astral bug things attacking us, maybe he can help us out. Ever hear of a bug spirit or bug shaman, Algernon? The elf's face curls into a grimace. I'm sorry. I find the very thought repugnant. You must understand. A shaman does not follow the literal incarnation of his totem. One who pledges himself to cat does not drink milk from a saucer or claw the drapes. Instead, a shaman follows the ideals of his totem. Dog is less a canine and more a symbol of loyalty. Coyote is less a scavenger and more a trickster. So you can understand why I find the idea of an insect totem so foreign. To what quality would a shaman aspire in such a case? A chill visibly runs through him. Please, let us speak of more pleasant things. Perhaps commerce. Okay, yeah, um... Insect spirits and insect shamans are, do not, are not well regarded in the Shadowrun universe. Well, you saw what you, you saw the kind of stuff they get into. They turn people into these bug monsters. Right. And the insects and the insect spirits are I've talked before about how there's like cycles of magic in the world, you know, as things. Well, I mean, you know, we're in the sixth world now here in Shadowrun. And that's why they're, you know, elves and such are back. Mm 